Hey, what's up? Back again. First base note hit me in the chest, and I was just like, there's no way that's too late. MB Enclosures it has his own YouTube channel, and this guy is an animal when it comes to designing boxes. And so I was asked, hey, welcome, this is MBE. Welcome to the channel, man. If you like what's going on, please like subscribe and share and they me to do more things and i appreciate those who have the notification bell on and able to watch the video as i release them in real time thank you i was asked by one of my subscribers or a commenter uh to do a video on crossover settings and should he use the crossover set on his head unit and use the crossover set on his amplifier no you should not if you use both of them you might cancel each other out and have some frequencies missing because you have the signal's getting processed here. And then when you get to the amplifier, if you have it set even lower, then you're gonna miss some frequencies. So let's say you had your crossover setting off your, just for example, you had your crossover setting on your head unit is 150 hertz and under. But on your amplifier, you have it set at 80 hertz and under. So you have 70 frequencies that you're not even gonna hear. You're missing them and you don't even know it. So between 80 and 150 is 70 frequencies. So your amplifier is cutting off those frequencies and it's just playing 80 and under. All right? So it's best just to take the amplifier, the subamp, and set it full pass or bypass and use the crossover setting on your hair unit to do all the processing of the signal. So let's look at what I have done on my Stinger hair unit, high 10. And you don't necessarily have to get a Stinger high 10. There's plenty of aftermarket head units that have these features. This is just a, this, this radio has a lot of features. But Kingwood, Pioneer, JVC, a lot of them have features on their radio, or uh, their aftermarket head unit product that does the same thing. So I go to settings, I go to, this is my audio setting, and I go to crossover. Now, whatever I'm activating on my head unit is going to be yellow. As you can see here, I just go to the subwoofer setting. So this is my subwoofer. My subwoofer has a 6 dB slope. So all the frequencies above 80 hertz are attenuated 6 dBs and gradually rises to that I, I, do have, I get very little mid bass between before it gets to my subwoofer. My subwoofer is dedicated 80 hertz and under. I also have a level control. And on the level control, in concert with my audio control, this is my, this is how I can, the sub level is controlling the RC outputs. If you have RC outputs, there's two volts, or maybe you have one that's four volts. If you have a sub level control, you're able to gauge how many, what's the voltage that's actually going through the output of your RCAs. By minimizing that voltage, you minimize how much the amplifier amplifies the signal coming in and give you a certain power output. So I can, I can hear, if I have an amplifier set, and let's just say this for, for, for all purposes, it's 1,000 watts. By minimizing the output signal here on the RCA, I can, I can minimize it here, and I can also, with my crossover, minimize it here as well. So I can lower how much power is actually making it to the sub. As you can see, I use a lot of headroom. And the reason why I do that, because music plays on dynamics peaks. When as music plays at certain peaks in the song, where well, you're gonna get even more power out of your amplifier. I leave a lot of headroom. My amplifier is set, my D, my M2000 is set to deliver 2000 watts at one ohm. That's when I have it at full voltage, full voltage. The full, full volt output. Now the videos in the same high 10, it doesn't really doesn't do five full volts, but it does not clip. It doesn't clip all the way. One thing for sh we know for sure, it doesn't clip all. There's no clipping on my head unit. All the way to volume for it. All right? Now, the subwoofer pre-out is not full volt. They have been tested. Some people have tested it. So that's a downside. But I'm having to use, well, if I didn't have another device in front of my amplifier, which is my audio control device, which I'm able to boot up my line output signal all the way to 7.5 volts, to send into my amplifier. So even though I don't have the voltage coming out here, I have a line driver that's in place of my amplifier, that's in front of my amplifier that boosts the signal up. 
So even though I don't have the output voltage going here, by going to my line driver, which is in my audio control uh, epicenter, I'm able to boost it up to a very high voltage so I don't have to use that much gain on my amplifier. But yet, even still, I never ride, I never max my system out. I leave headroom for the piece of music so that when the bass hits, no matter what volume level I have it here, I always have enough room for the signal to stay clean and for the amplifier to control the subwoofer. That's the NBE way. Always get more power than you need so you can dial it back and have headroom, whether it's your sub or your amplifier or, or your mids and highs. So my crossover setting on my subwoofer is set at 80 hertz. On my amplifier, it's bypassed. It's wide open. It's wide open. But it's only going to receive... 80 hertz and under will roll off because my slope here is 6 dB. I have no mids coming, very little, very little, from 100 hertz to 80. Attenuated 6 dB can come through into my subwoofer, but you, that's not really audible. You're not really going to hear that at all. I mean, really, unless you, there's going to be some people in comments that say, yes, they can, trust me. Well, if you trust me, you're watching my channel because most of you that subscribe, I get thousands of views and then I'm going to get 50, 60, 80 comments from detractors and they entitled and you can, if you really want to listen to what they say, then click on their link and you'll see most of them don't even have any help at all, but they there to troll anybody else that's trying to help people. That's just how some people are. That's just human beings. But remember, as I told you before, when you listen to your crossover and your EQ the control of your signal, this is all opinion. There is no perfect way to set your EQ. The roundabout is a perfect way to set your crossover based on the music you listen to. There is no one way to do it fit all. That's 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 not this is opinion. You're shaping the music to how you want it to sound in your vehicle. Even if when I show you how I use my time time alignment, which I do not use on my head unit. I haven't even set that up yet because I'm still working with some things that I want to do inside my system before I even get to the listening positions where as far as I want how I would set it to hit for the, the setting here, preset for driver's listening or do how I want it. If I was do RTA, uh, a real SQ system, then I'd probably have a setting where how it would sound in the center of the vehicle. Having this model truck, the placement of the speakers is, in my opinion, in my opinion, what I like. I do not want a tweeter high up next to my ear. I do not. Maybe, no, I do not. I like how I can immerse myself in the sound, and those who have heard my system in person, maybe they will attest when they listen to it and say, man, it sounds, it sounds incredible. I don't have to do anything. Just leave it just as it is. The placement of the speakers are fine. I don't need to angle my tweeters because I have speakers in the dash. What I have done, if you add up all my mids and high speakers in my dash, I have in my vehicle, I have uh, eight in the doors, 11. One, two, it's eight in the doors. This makes 11 in the dash. There's three in the dash. And then I have two in the headliner. I have 13 speakers inside this system. 13 speakers. I am immersed. Sound is everywhere. everywhere. I have three and a half. In the, I have three and a half in my head in my headboard, three and a half on the dash, four sets of tweeters. I mean, four tweeters, and four six and a half. You immerse the sound is coming from everywhere inside my vehicle. Okay, right. So with my crossover settings on my front stage, which is up here, the dash and two on the door. Okay. Now the dash is still on my factory. I haven't I haven't went full active on that yet. The dash is still on the factory system. It's getting like 25 watts per speaker. Okay? The front stage is the, the two in the door. I have it crossed over thanks to my DD my DD A series. At an 18, 18 degree slope coming up. And so as it goes lower, that cross is 63 hertz. I could take them to 40, but looking at the specs on the on the driver and how I like my system to sound. I'm bringing on my front stage, I'm actually bringing the bass up more by crossing them over at 60 hertz with 18 degree slope. So when I play real music like decaf or rebass music, I'm not overextending my woofers in the door. That's the yellow line, okay? As you go to the rear, the rear behind, 
because it's so close to the uh, the sub itself, I have it crossed down at 80. That's the crossover point where it meets. So the mids in my rear doors, I don't have that base. I don't bring forward at all because it's already held by the subwoofer in the back. So I, min I minimize it. I'm bringing the bass forward on my front on my front speakers, but on the rear I don't need that because then I'd even get even more bass response. And it it could well in my system where it's set now it won't override the highs. But I this high this is what sounds good to me. And then with my EQ, this is for demo. Well, I actually, no, I use this for demo. <laughs> I use a demo. I use this at volume twenty. I use this at volume thirty because as I'm increasing more power. I don't have to boost any frequencies. I use the demo. I'm going full tilt. There's no equalization here. I'm just using the power of the amp, which is on the the, uh, the, uh, the remote gain control, then to increase the sound. Remember, as I said before, in closing, this your crossover settings are roughly one of for the speaker, depending on what speakers you're using, how low you can go. Most people on a subwoofer use 80 and under. Some, depending on the music they listen to, use all of the 150 or 160. Some use 250. This is opinion. This is not etched in stone. You can cross over your sub however you want to cross it over. Me, I'm a bass pierce. I like it at 80. Some people so bass pierce don't even want an 80. They have I can cross it, I can cross it over at 40. But I cross mine at 80. My EQ is how I want to listen to my music. It's what I find acceptable. Never let no one tell you, hey man, you, you're doing this, your EQ shouldn't be here, you shouldn't be there. That's the music that they listen to. And that's their opinion. And also their vehicle may sound different from yours. That's why it's called equalization, to equal out the sound. Where you need to increase or decrease is based on how you want it to sound. Not how Joe Blow or anybody in the comments want it to sound. Peace. Get in there if you need an enclosure. 404 694 4818. If you want an enclosure. If you like what's going on, please like, subscribe, and share this video. I'm just here to help people with the little bit that I do know. And thanks for watching. Peace.